This could be an example of how we're going to connect to a local JSON file and use the data from the JSON file, output it on the page. So we've got the URL, we've got an event listener on the button. When the button gets clicked, then we make a fetch request to the URL, retrieve back the contents as JSON because it is JSON formatted, and then add it to the page using a function called adder where we create an unordered list and then add the list items into the unordered list as text content within the list items. We've got a div on the page, a button, and when the button gets clicked, we're gonna make an Ajax request to the JSON file. We've got a data JSON file, so this just lists out some names, first and last name, and then output the contents into the container. And this is all gonna be done with JavaScript. We've selected the page elements, so we've got the button from the page, and this uh, just has an ID of button, so just update that, and that's from the last lesson, where we've got the button, we've got the input, value, which we don't need anymore, and then we've got the main container. So let's add an event listener for the button. And you can also do the add event listener. So this is another way to add event listeners. And with the add event listener method in JavaScript, you can add multiple add event listeners to the same element as well. You can remove those event listeners if needed. So the method is that it requires the arguments for what type of event it's listening for. So we're listening for a click and then what happens whenever it gets clicked. So this is gonna be the function that gets run. You can do an anonymous function directly within the event listener. So right now, whenever we click it, we're just gonna be outputting log onto the page. So what we wanna do is we wanna make a connection to this JSON file and output the contents of the JSON file onto the main element, which is the element with the class of container. So we want to make a fetch request and I'll get rid of this and we're just gonna create a named function and I'll call it req data to request the data and then req data is gonna be a function that's gonna make the fetch request. So within the fetch, we wanna get the URL. So I'm gonna add in the URL within the global scope of the application so it's going to be under the data json and this is the path to the file it's located on the same directory as my app js so within the fetch request once we get the data back the next stage in the promise is where we've got the response object and within the response object we want to return back the response contents as json and we're going to use the json method within fetch in order to do that and then we're retrieving it back as data. And then once we've got the data object, we'll output that into the console. So that means that our content is ready to be used. Meaning of the fetch request, you can catch errors. So using the catch, and this is a way that you can catch any errors that might occur doing the fetch request. And within the console, I'll just do a console error and we'll output whatever we get back for the error message. So this is a custom way to handle any errors. Right now we don't have any errors. Uh, let's make an update to the file. The file is not found, so it's going to throw an error within the console, and that, that way we can troubleshoot any errors that we might catch. So let's go back and we'll change that back to the actual file. So we've got the file. It's being returned back as an array. And that means that since it's an array that we could loop through the contents. So we'll take that content and I'll just call it create a function called adder and pass in the data object once we receive it into that function. And then directly within that function, the first thing we'll do is we'll output the content. So we'll take it in as data and using the console log, we'll output the contents of data so that we're ready to output it on the page. Uh, we can also shorten this as well, where we can get rid of a line of code and just sending it over to adder. So let's uh, see if that works. So now we've got the data within adder and it's ready to loop through. So just as uh, with any array, we can loop through the contents of the array using for each. We can retrieve back the element object content. And now I'll output it into the console and then afterwards we'll add it to the page. So create a list of items. So click me, so there's all of the objects that are contained within the data JSON array. 
And the structure is the same, so structure is important because if the structure is different, then you're not going to be able to access the property names. Uh, so that's why the structure should be the same for each item within the array as we loop through, which is going to make it a lot easier in order to output the contents. So we can just reference it now as the element first and last, and that's going to retrieve that information. So let's uh, create an element. So we're going to create an unordered list using the document create element and the element that we're creating is an unordered list and we'll add these as list items into the unordered list so for the main object we're going to append the new unordered list that we're just going to create and then we'll create the list items as we loop through each one of the items that's contained within the json data file so using the document create element and the element they're creating is a list item and within this list item, the text content of the list item is going to be the string value. And we can get this from the element. So we've got element first, and then also the last, so element last, using the property names. And that way we can output that content as text content on the page. Uh, we can also get the index value if we want. So retrieve back the index value. Just wrap it with another bracket. And here I'll output the index value plus one so that we have a starting value of one. And these are going to be list items, so we, we don't have to. We can do it as an ordered list as well. So adding it in as the list items. And then next we need to append it to the unordered list. So append and append the list item to the unordered list. So let's see how that goes. So that creates a list to the JSON file as we're getting the request content coming back. So that's how you can make a request to JSON data, retrieve it, and use it on your web page with Ajax.